Hi programmers, and welcome to another Plus One Software video. I'm Ellie Zeno, and I'm a technical trainer at Danfoss Power Solutions. Torge Peterson, a software product application engineer at Danfoss, created all the lovely screenshots, screen captures, and edits. How to set up the CS10 as a Wi-Fi access point. After you successfully connect your PC to the CS10, you can select the Plus One Interlink Gateway and Service tool and start to configure the CS10. I used the latest version of the CS10 that was available at the time that I created this video. It is recommended to download the latest LHX and P1D files from the Update Center to configure the CS10. First, Torge had to restore the default settings so that you can follow along with my instructions. This can be done on the overview page where he restored the default settings and rebooted the device. To set up the CS10 as a Wi-Fi mode access point, on the Wi-Fi mode page, choose the operation mode access point and check the box next to auto enable Wi-Fi. This is the recommended setting. If auto enable Wi-Fi is enabled, the CS10 automatically creates a wireless local area network when the device is powered on. If auto enable is disabled, the Wi-Fi is deactivated after power reset. Click save and then on to the next tab on the Wi-Fi page called Operation. Wi-Fi Configuration. The default settings are displayed on the Wi-Fi Operation page. The red text indicates that the default credentials need to be changed in order to get access to the CAN bus, otherwise it will be blocked as long as the default SSID is used. Torge set the SSID name to CS10 Access Point, but you can rename it any meaningful name. Be sure to click Save. If Wi-Fi is not enabled already, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't, go ahead and click Enable. You can also check that the Wi-Fi is enabled with the white indicator LED on the CS10 itself. If the Wi-Fi is enabled, the service tool will check that the SSID name format is good and will indicate the status with the LED, either green for correct naming format or red for incorrect naming format. Now, to check the correct format, delete the SSID name, keep it empty, and click Save. The LED will turn red since the SSID format has not been met. It should include at least one character. Now you can change it back to CS10 Access Point or another meaningful name. If you would like to change the password, you can check mark the Set Password field. Another field called Password is visible where you can set a password. The password format needs to have at least eight characters, otherwise the format error will be shown via the red LED. Click Save and all necessary Wi-Fi AP settings are done. SSID and password have been set correctly and are shown with the green LED. Access point is enabled and the status shows AP created and our AP name is shown. When advanced settings are enabled, all default settings for the network are shown. For this example, we're going to keep all the default settings, including keeping DHCP enabled. On the lower right side, under Connected Clients, you can see how many devices have been connected with your Wi-Fi access point. Currently, there is an amount of zero, and the index LED is red, which means that there is no connection to the access point available. Torge used his Android phone to establish a Wi-Fi connection to the CS10 gateway. You can see CS10 access point is listed in the available network list on his phone. As soon as the connection has been established, the amount of connected clients count is at least one and the index of that device shows a green status. The MAC address of this connected device will be shown as well. If you have more than one device connected to the access point, you can choose these and click on go to index to see the status and the MAC address. Don't forget to save your settings. Service tool connection. To test the Wi-Fi connection to the CS10 access point, connect your PC to the CS10 gateway, first using the Wi-Fi network settings on your PC. Disconnect the CG150 and close the P1D. This is necessary because when switching the CG150 to Wi-Fi communication, it changes the gateway net number. After connecting to the Wi-Fi, open up Service Tool and select the gateway under Communication. Then you can go to Plus One Interlink and select the device, which is listed with the EID number. If the CS10 is not appearing in Plus One Interlink, hit Refresh. 
you may need to restart the service tool. Sometimes it is also necessary to disconnect the default existing Wi-Fi connections from your PC. Otherwise, it could switch automatically to that connection again. If the device is still not appearing, there might be an issue with the communication from the PC to the CS10. To fix this, you can do a power reset on the CS10 and check the Wi-Fi connection from the PC to the CS10 once more. Please also check the network settings on your PC or laptop. In Torgay's case, he was able to successfully connect to the CS10 access point and also connect with his service tool using the interlink gateway. Please note, if you didn't close the P1D or the service tool when you switched the CG150 to Wi-Fi communication, your opened P1D might not show any data. This is because the net ID of the CS10 changed from 0, the CG150 connection, to 4, the Wi-Fi connection. To fix this, you'll need to close your current diagnostic file or go to File, Replace Existing ECU. In this example, we have connected an MC024 controller to the CS10 CAN bus to show that the signals are transferred from the CS10 correctly and that the CS10 acts as the remote gateway to my controller. Now you can use Service Tool with all its usual functionalities to read out or write parameters or download the firmware or parameters to the CS10 and any other ECU which is connected to the CS10 CAN bus. Next, I'll show you how to set up the CS10 in Wi-Fi station mode. First, Torge had to restore the default settings so that you can follow along with my instructions. This can be done on the overview page where he restored the default settings and rebooted the device. To set up the CS10 in Wi-Fi station mode, on the Wi-Fi mode page, Torge chose the operation mode, station mode, and checked the auto enable Wi-Fi box. This is the recommended setting. If auto enable Wi-Fi is set, the CS10 automatically creates a wireless local area network when the device is powered on. If the auto enable is not set, the Wi-Fi is deactivated after each power reset. Be sure to click save and then on to the next tab on the Wi-Fi page called Operation. Wi-Fi configuration. The default settings are displayed on the Wi-Fi operation page. The first one here is auto connect which is set so that the CS10 device automatically tries to connect to the selected network after power on. If you click on Advanced Settings, you can see that the DHCP mode is set by default. DHCP mode is needed for this example, so he will keep this setting unchanged. Under Client Status on the right side of this page, the SSID shows the default name including the EID. This needs to be changed with the gateway name you want to connect the CS10 to. To do so, you first have to enable the Wi-Fi station mode by clicking the Enable button. After Wi-Fi has been enabled, it shows a list of available networks. Enabled Wi-Fi is also shown with the white LED on the CS10 itself. To fill this list with data of available networks, you will need to press the Scan button. This can take a little bit of time, just until the list gets filled with data. The number of available networks is shown in the field Amount Access Points. The first element to be shown in the list can be selected with the Start Index field and by pressing the Go To Index button. For each available network, the SSID, Signal Quality, Signal Level, and the Security Type are provided. Via the Password and Connect buttons, you are able to connect with any listed gateway in the Access Point list. After an available network has been connected with the correct password, the connected IPv4 address, the link quality, and Wi-Fi mode are filled with data. Don't forget to press Save. Service Tool Connection. To test the Wi-Fi connection to the CS10 station mode, the PC needs to be in the same network. In this example, Torge used his home network, which his PC is connected to by default. Since the CS10 is set up with the same gateway, both the PC and the CS10 are in the same network. After connecting to the network, he opened up the service tool and selected the gateway under communication. He then navigated to the plus one interlink and selected the device, which is listed with the EID number. If the CS10 is not appearing in plus one interlink, hit refresh. 
you may need to restart the service tool. Sometimes it is also necessary to disconnect the default existing Wi-Fi connections from your PC. Otherwise, it could switch automatically to that connection again. If the device is still not appearing, there might be an issue with the communication from the PC to the CS10. To fix this, you can do a power reset on the CS10 and check the Wi-Fi connection from the PC to the CS10 again. Please also check the network settings on your PC or laptop. In this example, Torga connected an MC024 controller to the CS10 CAN bus to show that the signals are transferred from the CS10 correctly and that the CS10 acts as the remote gateway to that controller. Now you can use Service Tool with all its usual functionalities to read out or write parameters or download the firmware or parameters to the CS10 and any other ECU which is connected to the CS10 CAN bus. We hope that you found this tutorial useful. Remember that Plus One Community Help is available on the Plus One User Forum, or you can contact the Plus One Help Desk. And don't forget to check out our other Plus One videos here on YouTube at Plus One Software. Happy programming. Thank you.